So when a female genital is cut or mutilated or affected in one way or the other, you can imagine the kind of pain. <laughs> Hey, welcome to another episode of Shades of Us, The Rant. I am Ramat. So I started a four-part series on female genital mutilation and I started by giving an overview of what it is, how it affects the global community, women's health and rights and children's health and rights too. Um, looked at why it is a socio-economic issue in my overview. And uh, today I'll focus on the types of female genital mutilation we have and the prevalence in Africa. But before I get into it, I have to give you discussions on the parts that are mostly affected by female genital mutilation. And this time I'll be talking about the anatomy of the vulva. This diagram will show you that the vulva is the external part of the female genitalia. It protects the woman's sexual organs, urinary opening, vestibule and vagina and it is the center of a woman's pleasure response. I'll tell you why that and some of the social cultural issues around that is why people support female genital mutilation but let me not drop uh, the gun. The outer and inner lips of the vulva are called the labia majora and the labia minora respectively. The vestibule surrounds the opening of the vagina or the introitus. I hope I got that right. And the opening of the urethra we, uh, or the urethral meter. So um, the perineum is the area extending from beneath the vulva to the anus. That is what it looks like on the outside. We are going to look at a diagram that uh, shows the pudendal nerve which transmits pain messages and other sensations from the vulva. Now I want you to remember the word, the pudendal nerve. I want you to remember that nerve because that nerve, ah, it's, it's tied to so many things, right? Or it goes through so many things. First, the pudendal nerve originates from the sacral spine, which is located directly behind, or be, sorry, directly below the lower back. So what? Two, the nerve passes through the pelvis and enters the vulva region near the ischial spine, which is part of the hip bone. So first, lower back. Second, hip bone, right? The third thing you need to know about the pudendal nerve is that from there, from the hip bone, it branches off into the inferior rectal nerve, and uh, the perineal nerve and the dorsal nerve of the clitoris. So this same nerve branches from the lower back to the hip bone, branches off into the rectal area, branches off into the dorsal and perineal nerves of the clitoris. So there's the lower back, there's the hip bone, there's your clitoris, and then the pudendal nerve is responsible for proper functioning and control of urination, defecation, and orgasm in both men and women. Which is to say that this nerve, which is really really important helps with control it helps with sexual satisfaction and then it is sensitive extremely so and if you know anything about genitalia in general and female genitalia in particular you know that they are extremely sensitive so when a female genital is cut or mutilated or affected in one way or the other you can imagine the kind of pain that you get to see with each um, procedure. So let's talk about the procedures then. The first one is called the clitoridectomy. Clitoridectomy. Um, this is the partial or total removal of the clitoris, which is as shown in the diagram, and in very rare cases, you know, the skin surrounding the clitoris. So basically, this type of female genital mutilation is taking 
whatever thing it is to cut off the clitoris take it out imagine how much pain a woman has to go through for this but it gets worse the second time so the second type of female genital mutilation is called the excision and this is the partial or total removal of the clitoris and the labia, labia minora which like i said are the inner folds of the vulva um, sometimes this happens with or without the cutting of the labia majora which is the outer folds of the skin of the vulva now these regions are extremely sensitive so when we say cutting you can imagine how much pain is being transmitted through this pudendal nerve that is connected to so many areas the lower back the hip bone the rectal area the vaginal area imagine how much pain a lady girl goes through when she's being cut the third type of female genital mutilation is called infibulation um, this is the narrowing of the vaginal opening through the creation of a covering or a seal now what many people do is that sometimes they use the labia majora and sew it together yes <clears throat> so it's shown in the diagram and um sometimes they do stitching sometimes they remove the clitoris so it's a whole procedure that is completely stressful for the woman so imagine what happens when she has to pee when she has to have sex when she has to go to the toilet like poop and all of that and imagine what she will be feeling with her lower back, all of these regions, the hip bone, the, all of these regions that the pudendal nerve passes through. And then finally, the fourth type sometimes is something that is done by choice. Um, it is harmful procedures to the female genital area um, for non medical purposes. For example, is piercing. Like some people pierce their vagina, they pierce their vulva, you know, there are people who do that. I, I i get you it's your right to do it but it is a type of mutilation there are people who prick at it there are those who incise that make cuts on it you know there are cultural traditions where they take a razor for example and they make like small cuts they're trying to take uh, yes i promise that this was going to be as clear and as open as it could be and then there are those who scrape off the skin or the area you know and then to make it worse, there are those who, especially you find that, especially when uh, people are, are, are taken for human trafficking, where they cauterize or burn the vagina or the vulva area because um, they're trying to exert control. So th these are one of the things that we are looking at. But it's worthy of note to know that the infibulation refers to the practice of cutting open the sealed vagina um, um, so that the woman can have a healthier um, life and have a healthier sexual um, life but then it, it is a process that helps the woman but the mutilation has had to have happened first for it to be helpful for the woman so it is it is really a stressful procedure and process um, globally over 200 women now to prevalence Globally, on over 200 million women alive today have been subject to female genital mutilation. And 44 million of those people are under the age of 14. Yeah, it is common practice in Middle East, I said it in the original video, in Asia, in Central and South America. And it is especially predominant in Africa. Like. There are statistics I'm going to be reading out that would surprise you and shock you to no end. But before then, there are lots of countries who are beginning to do the safe female genital mutilation. There's nothing safe about it. It's not necessary. It is completely... I will not jump the gun. But, like, the UK is doing a couple of surgeries that are supposed to be safe. Australia has done 200,000 surgeries um, in 2018 alone. Um, and then in, it's expected that there will be 15 million girls who will be cut in Indonesia in the next couple of years, before 2030. So that is a big problem. All of these figures were um, gotten from the World Health Organization and the United Nations Population Fund. Now let's talk about the prevalence in Africa. It's a really important thing. 
female genital mutilation for women between the ages of 15 to 49. We know that these are the ages of women in their sexual um, prime, sexual and reproductive health of women. That is the time you measure it, right? So Somalia has a whopping 98% of their women cut. 98%. Now, Guinea has 97%. Djibouti has 93%, Egypt has 91%, Sierra Leone has 90%, Mali has 89%, Sudan 88%, Eritrea 83%, Gambia 76%, Burkina Faso 76%, Ethiopia 74%, Mauritania has 69% of their women cut. Guinea, Liberia has 66% of their women cut. Guinea Bissau 50%. Cote d'Ivoire 44%, Kenya 38%, uh, Senegal 27%, um, um, se yeah, Senegal 27, 26%, Nigeria has 25% of its women cut. And this is especially found in the southern part of Nigeria, southern including southeastern, southwestern, and south southern, especially in the south southern part of Nigeria. Um, the Central Af African Republic has 24% of its women cut, and then Yemen, war torn Yemen, has 19% of its women cut. Tanzania has 15%, Iraq um, has 8%, Benin Republic has 7%, and then Ghana, Togo, Niger, Uganda, and Cameroon have between 1 to 4%. So these are how often we see the situation in Africa. It is a problem. Somalia, a whopping 98% of these women are caught. There are social cultural reasons why this is happening, but then right now we will not jump into it. We have an episode that is exclusively designed for that. So that is what I can take for today. But I do have a couple of questions. Um, I want to know what do you think about the procedures that are carried out during female genital mutilation? Why do you think that the rates are so high in Somalia? And do you think that it is in any way connected to the development of the country? Because we know Somalia has a lot of problems from being war-torn, poorly developed, lacking in a lot of human indices issues. So could it be one of the reasons? Yeah. So in the next episode, I'll look at the ripple effects of female genital mutilation on women's health and their social economic existence. But for now, I'd like you to drop your comments, subscribe to the vlog, and make sure to be a part of it. Um, new episodes every Wednesday at 3.05 p.m. West African time. I'd like to thank the World Health Organization, the United Nations Population Fund, and all other organizations that are working hard to ensure that we have the research data, that, that are working hard to push towards an end for the female genital mutilation. This way I'll end the episode today and I can't wait to have your discussions with you. Hugs and kisses from Amat. Bye.